And your name, please. My name is Hugh Masekela. My name is Hugh Masekela. My name is Hugh Masekela. Only one of these men is the real Hugh Masekela. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to tell the truth with your host, Bob Collier. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Good evening, dear, dear panel. Good evening, Good evening Bud. Dear Welcome Bob. back, Bud. It's <laughs> good to see you again. We're brought to you tonight by Winston Filter Cigarettes. Panel, open that envelope in front of you, if you will, please, and let's follow along in this first story. I, Hugh Masakela, am a member of the Pedi tribe in South Africa. As a boy, I saw an American movie called Young Man with a Horn. From that moment on, I knew I was destined to be a trumpet player. I got hold of a second-hand instrument and taught myself to play it by hanging around dance halls and listening to the music. Eventually, I came to the United States, took formal lessons, and am now the leader of my own jazz quartet. Signed, Hugh Masakela. <laughs> three gentlemen all claim to be Hugh Masakela, South African jazz trumpeter. Let's start this questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Oh, thanks, Bud. Uh, I'll ask uh, number two if uh, you know a trumpet man named Gary Hack. No, I don't. Never heard of him. Number three, do you know Gary Hack? No. Number one? No. Uh, thank you. Number one, who's Henry Bussey? Henry Bussey? Do you remember him no. as a trumpet man? Do you know number two? No. Number three? Never heard of him. <laughs> oh, he's, uh, he's quite a wild... Number three, who played in the movie uh, Young Man with a Horn? Uh, Kirk Douglas. Kirk Douglas. Number one, how old were you when you saw that film? I was about 13. Who was the girl in... Oops, he did Peggy Cass. Number two, who was Bix Beiderbeck? Uh, he was a great trumpet player. Thank you. Uh, number one, what is the felt? The felt, uh, the planes. Thank you. Africa. Number three, who was the last king of the Zulus in the South African War? Don't know. Thank you. Number two, where is Mafa King? I don't know. Thank you. Number one, who's Earl Father Hines? Earl Father Hines, the piano player. Thank you very much. Um, let me see. I, I lost my place. Arthur B. <laughs> Number three, name me any king of the Zulus. Is <laughs> it Zulu? Who? Is it Zulu? Is it Zulu? Number one, uh, there was where, uh, no. Uh, there was a musical producer in South Africa called King Kong. Who was King Kong in real life? It's what did boxer. he do? What? It was a boxer. All right. Number two, uh, the Penny Whistle Blues was a film. Uh, where was it produced? In England. Uh, n number three, do you agree with that? Johannesburg. Number one, where is Timbuktu? Somewhere in Africa. Number, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Kitty Carla. Uh, number one, what is an embouchure? Embouchure is uh, the position of your mouth uh, uh, in relationship to the trumpet. Thank you. Uh, number two, when, how did you get to America? Uh... I was helped by the missionary who taught Thank me. Thank you. Number three, what language does the Petty tribe speak? They speak... Um... How would you say it in, in American? How would you say it in English? Swahili. Swahili. Number one, how many uh, words are there in the Swahili language? I don't know. Number two? And that's all the time we have, but there is time for you to clearly mark your ballot with your trumpet or whatever you will. <laughs> Mark your ballots without change and without consultation with each other while marking. Simply vote now for number one, number two, or number three. The team of challenges will, of course, be awarded $250 for every incorrect vote. Are all your ballots marked? Yes, sir. Very well. Tom, for whom did you vote? 
I voted for number one. He has the look of a man who might be impressed by a movie, romantic, and the look of determination that would help him to follow through on an ambition like that. <laughs> Thank you, Cat. Well, I voted for one, too. I won. And, uh... <laughs> I don't know, just because I like them. <laughs> Orson Bean, what is your choice? Well, number two said that Penny Whistle Blues was uh, filmed in England. Uh, it was actually filmed in South Africa. Number three, I don't remember why I didn't vote for him. Number one, didn't know where Timbuktu was. I didn't vote for any of them. Uh, no, uh, that's in South Africa, number one, but I don't know where Allentown, Pennsylvania is, so that wouldn't prove... <laughs> 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 Kitty <Kenny Carlisle. laughs> I voted for number one, too. Oh, you made it unanimous. <laughs> unanimous all the way. I thought number one gave the best answers. Very well, there we have it. With the unanimous vote all for number one. Now let's find out which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is the young man who uh, decided with great resolve to learn how to play the horn and has become a South African jazz trumpeter, Hugh Masakela. Now, as you uh, may or may not know it, uh, Hugh is married to an internationally famous young lady uh, who is... Just one of the great ones in South African Not Miriam Makeba. Miriam Makeba oh, is yeah. exactly right. Oh, yeah. And I'd like you to meet her now. <laughs> hey, Bart. I'm, I'm I know uh, the, the daughter. You do? Yeah, I taught her to swim a couple no, of summers ago. No, well, now, here we go. We're going to ask uh, Miss McCabe, if she will, to point out which one of these gentlemen is really your husband. Uh -huh. Can you do that for us? I think it's three. He's I think it's lot. three. He's dying. Uh -huh. Justice, it is a great treat for anybody to see you perform and hear you perform. It's a great treat for us to have you here tonight. Thank you. Uh, now, I know that Hugh is going to play for us with his uh, quartet. Could you tell us something about what it is that he's going to play and sing? Yes, the song he's going to play is called Magualandini, and it's in praise of the brave Kosa warriors. Uh-huh. All right, uh, Hugh, if you're ready, let's hear from you. Lumka ni makwalani ni nanga mampondo makwalani ni Lumka ni makwalani ni nanga mampondo Ni lalele ni we makwalani ni 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 Yalele ahom 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 That's great. Too, too short a sample as far as we're concerned, but very good. I know. Uh, incidentally, uh, <clears throat> Hugh Masekela and his quartet, who consists of Sal Dodson on the bass, Larry Willis on the piano, and Henry Jenkins on the drum, are just about to start on a national tour, and they will end up at the famous Hungry Eye in San Francisco. That's where they wind up the tour. Much success to you, Hugh. Thank you. Man. You deserve it. Number two, would you tell us uh, what your real name is and what you really do, sir? I'm Alexis Poole. I'm a civil engineer. <laughs> Number three, your real name and what do you do, sir? Malcolm Abita. 
I'm a, a tour guide on tours around New York, offbeat section. <laughs> Well, in checking through the score, we find, of course, that the panel was much too smart on that very first one. They all got it right. In that case, of course, there's still $150 coming your way, and we hope it brings you great joy. You brought it to us and enlivened our evening no end, and we thank you for that. Goodbye, and God bless you. <laughs> and the panel will be back at it in just a minute, right after this. And now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Jack Kelly. My name is Jack Kelly. My name is Jack Kelly. My name is Jack... No, uh... <laughs> panel, open up that next How envelope, if you will, and follow along. I, Jack Kelly, am the youngest officially elected mayor in the country. I was chosen for the office from among the candidates from four parties by the student voters of Boys Town, Nebraska. I preside over the All Boy Town Council, act as liaison between the student body and the faculty, supervise the dining hall at mealtime, and am the official Boys Town greeter. Incidentally, I am the only legitimately elected mayor in the United States who plays high school football. Signed, Jack Kelly. <laughs> Now, panel, these three young men all claim to be Jack Kelly, his honor, the mayor of Boys Town. We'll start the cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty. Thank you, bud. Um, bravo, whichever one it is. Um, uh, number one, uh, is this an autonomous group that you're the mayor of? I mean, it, it, it doesn't have anything to do with the, with the government of Nebraska? Oh, no, it has nothing to do with the government of Nebraska. Nothing Nebraska. at all? No. Uh, number two, who is the uh, head of the faculty of Boys Town? Father Wagner. Number three, how many uh, boys are you? Uh, 900. 900. Number one, do you all eat at once? No, we don't. The uh, senior high school eats at one time, and the junior high school eats at another. Number two, how young are the youngest boys? There's one out there about four years old. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Tom Poston. Well, I'm very interested. Uh, I'll ask first, number three, are there other boys' towns? Yes, there's one in Mexico and one in Italy. Thank you. Number two, uh, how are your courts arranged in Boys Town? Um, do you have uh, do you have uh, courts there? We're How are the boys uh, judged or so? Or or like well, uh, most of the punishment is taken care of by the adult supervisors. Thank you. Number one, do you have uh, uh, other political figures in your town? We have uh, four councilmen uh, and twenty-five commissioners, uh, but the mayor is the only really political figure. Peggy Cat. Thank you. Number three, what's the slogan of Boys Town? We, uh, he ain't heavy, Father. He's my brother. Uh, n number two, who played Father Wagner in the movie? I think it was Father Wagner. Who played the priest in the movie of Boys Town? Spencer Tracy. Tracy. Thank you. Number one, who played the boy? I don't know. You're too young. Oh, it makes me feel old. <laughs> my dear, number three, does Boys Town have a college? No, it doesn't. Thank you. Uh, number one, who is St. Dismas? Who's he patron saint of? I don't know. Thank you. Um, number two, is, there, is, is Father Wagner a Jesuit? I don't know. Oh. Orson Bean. Number two, you would know it if he were. <laughs> Number three, uh, uh, I didn't get my uh, Christmas uh, stamps from Boys Town this year. Would you tell Father Wagner that? I mean, what, how many stamps are sent out every year? Do you know? Oh, over a million. Over a million? Yes. Number one, uh, where is, uh, from what little I know of Boys Town, where is Spencer Tracy Avenue in Boys Spencer Town? Spencer Tracy Avenue? Yeah. I don't know. Mickey Rooney Street? No. <laughs> I don't know. Number two, uh, what are the four... And that's all the time we have, so take your ballots in hand and mark them, if you will, please, because there's no further time for questions. Just simply vote now, as near the truth as you can come. Voting as you go without consultation, without change, for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots seem to be marked. Very well. Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number three. He looks like he could play football real well. 
He knew about that slogan or the saying that. Go ahead. <laughs> Peggy. Well, number one looks like a quarterback to me. So I voted for him. And another thing, my dear, when he made that crack about Father Wagner, that boy got very red in the face. As if Roy would have Father Wagner's going to say when I get back to Boys Town. <laughs> Orson. Father Wagner knows I'm right. <laughs> number one uh, didn't uh, know about Mickey Rooney, and number two didn't know uh, uh, something or other, and number three has my vote. He looks like a born politician. <laughs> well, Kitty, for who? I voted for vote? number three for exactly the same reason. I thought that number three looked like the best uh, politician in the group, although they all gave marvelous answers. <laughs> Very well, that makes it nearly unanimous. You oh, did so well without the first round. Me. Three for number three, only one for number one. Let's try that, shall we, and see which one of these young men, in truth, is the real mayor of Boys Town. Will the real Jack Kelly please stand up? That's taken the success of the first round and thrown it right back in your teeth. <laughs> Complete reversal. Jack, how long do you have as mayor? Six months. Well, a successful term to you, sir. Thank you. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? Uh, my name is John Distel and I'm a freshman at Brown University. <laughs> this young man is also very modest, may I say. He happens to be the current North Atlantic State Senior Men's Figure Skating Champion. There's nothing about that. <laughs> and number three, you got most of the votes. What is your real name, you politician, and what do you do? <laughs> My name is Peter Gotch. Uh, I'm a freshman at New York Institute of Technology, and, and I'm part-time worker at Hill Supermarket in Hassett, Long Island. Good for you. <laughs> well, in taking the score, you got it, fellas. There are four incorrect and $250 apiece. That's $1,000 you take along with you, and may it gladden your lives. Good night, and God bless you. All right, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Yurapon Harprasad Sook. My name is Yurapon Harprasad Sook. My name is Yurapon Harprasad Sook. Panel, follow along with your copies of this one, if you will. I, Europorn Horprasartsuk, am a stewardess for Thai International Airlines. I am also honored to have been chosen official hostess on all royal flights of the King and Queen of Thailand. Although in actuality their majesties are more polite and easier to serve than most passengers, protocol and respect dictate my catering to them in a very special manner. I not only must kneel while serving them, but also must back away from them down the aisle of the airplane on my knees. Signed, Europorn Horprasartso. <laughs> and these three young ladies all claim to be Europorn Horprasartso, airline hostess to the King and Queen of Thailand. We'll start this round, if we may, with Orson Bean. Orson? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Yurupon uh, Hopra Sartsuk number two. Uh, there is a little place in Bangkok that makes great daiquiris. It's in the most famous hotel of uh, Bangkok. What is the most famous hotel of Bangkok? Erawan Hotel. Er have you ever tasted the daiquiris there? No? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Refuse to answer, eh? Right. Number one, why was, uh, uh, first of all, what was uh, Thailand called before it was called Thailand? Siam. Why was it changed from Siam? Because we are free, always free. All right. Kitty Carlisle. Number three, what do you do if the plane is bumpy and you're serving dinner? Because every time I have dinner on a plane, it's always, that, that's the time it gets bumpy. And you have to back away on your knees. Oh, we don't back our knees when the time is bumping like that. You're allowed to stand up and move even though uh, his, his Majesty and the Queen are on board? 
Well, we have a chair to hold on or something to hold on. Thank you. Number two, what was the name of the King of Siam during the time of, of, of The King and I, that famous musical play by Richard Rodgers and Oscar Hammerstein? It's King Mongkut the Fort. Number one, do you agree with that? Yes. Tom Poston. Uh, thank you. Number one, do you like to fly? Yes, I love to fly. But uh, does, uh, number two, does the king and queen, does his majesty and, and uh, her majesty, do they like to fly? Yes. They don't mm -hmm. mind at all. Thank you. Number three, do you serve drinks on the plane? Yes. Uh, number three, do the king and queen have occasion to drink a little oh. bit sometimes? We're oh. not allowed to give out all this uh, private... Uh... <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, the king. Oh, I see. It's not, nothing against your religion to, to drink, is it, number two? Oh, excuse me. Uh, Peggy Cash. Number two, what is the religion of Thailand? It's Buddhism. Thank you. Number one, what is the king's name? Bumipon uh, Adoriyadeh. Hmm. Number three, the, the king of Siam has a hobby. What is it? Do you know? He's a jazz musician. He plays uh, the clarinet. He plays what? The clarinet. Clarinet. Thank you. Number two, has he composed music? Yes, he did. Thank you. Number three, there are lots of umbrellas in Thailand, right? Umbrellas, you know. Parasol. Parasol. Number one. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Before we open any umbrellas or parasols, we have to stop because uh, the time is gone. But you may mark your balance, if you will, panel. Mark them at once, without change, of course. And mark them without any consultation. While you are marking, simply vote. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots are not quite marked. No. Well, Peggy finally marked. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I'd vote for all three of them, but <laughs> I had to choose one, so I voted for number one. Something about the way she said she really did enjoy flying. It's a good thing in her position. Peggy. Well, I voted for number three, because after all, if you're a king and queen, you need a discreet hostess that won't say whether you booze or not, and she will. <laughs> Orson Bean. If he plays jazz, he must, he must have a little cooking sherry now. And then. <laughs> I voted, I, I think it's number two, but I voted for number one because of the way, when I asked her why the country was called Thailand, she said, because we are always free. I don't know what it means, but it sounds good. <coughs> Kitty. I voted for number three because she was giggling at what I think she thought was our silly question. <laughs> <laughs> so it's evenly split then. Two for number one, two for number three. Let's find out at once which one of these young ladies is the real airline hostess to the king and queen of Thailand. Will the real Europorn Horprasartsuk Please, stand up. Thank you very much. Two quick questions for you. First, what does your name mean, if I were to try to translate it into English? It means the, be the beauty of the peacock's feathers. Lovely. Now, one other quick question, and that is uh, about the name, at least. Uh, do you have a nickname of any kind? No. They, they call you Europorn? Europorn, yes. Europorn. Mm -hmm. Pretty name. It's a lovely name. Uh, and, and when you said that because you're always free, did you mean that, that Thailand means that? Yes. Mm -hmm. That their name, Thailand, means always and free. It, and it's true. And it's true. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Burani Tira Patanakun, and I'm a student of a business school here in New York. I'm glad I didn't have your name to say, too. <laughs> Number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Sirat Tantrakun. I am an operatic singer. Well, ladies, in checking the score, we find that there were two solid incorrect votes, and that's twice $250, or a total of $500 that you take along with us, as well as our thanks for joining us and gracing our show and making it that much prettier. Good night, and God bless you. Very well, panel, take a minute while we look at this brief film. Delay seat belts another day. Seat belts save lives in your car, not in the store. 
That's all we have time for tonight. Good night to you, panel, and bless you all. Good night, Bob. Good night from Winston. And don't forget to join us again the same time next week. And, of course, I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. In the meantime, may I remind you once again to tell the truth. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Woodson, Bill Todman production. To Tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by Winston Filter Cigarettes. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, wishing you a very happy new year. The program pre-recorded. <laughs>